All right, guys, so uh, down here under the truck, I figured I'd show you kind of what we're looking at here. Um, just so you understand what we're trying to get into and why this is important. Um, obviously, in any turbocharged application, having a tight exhaust system before the turbo is very important. And the reason for that is those exhaust gases um, need to be under pressure to drive the turbo. Uh, generally, you're looking at about a one-to-one -one, uh, boost to drive ratio. So if you're running 30 pounds of boost, you're also running about 30 pounds on the compressor side, on the, uh, on the exhaust side, the hot side of the turbo. So um, it's important that you've got a good seal there. And when I was down here, uh, kind of getting started putting um, some of this stuff together, you can probably see right there, uh, there's a bolt head missing off of that back cylinder. Um, what happens is these bolts heat cycle so much as the truck warms up and cools down and you know it sees anything from ambient temperatures all the way up to 12 or 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, those bolts stretch and they give and over time the metal just fatigues and uh, they break down. So we've got uh, one there that's broken off. It looks like to get you some light so it shows up on the camera here. Looks like all the rest of them on that side are okay. Um, but it is leaking some exhaust. Uh, as I come down in through here, it may be hard to see with the coloration on here, but uh, it's definitely kind of sooty up in there. It's leaking out of that back exhaust port. Um, this truck already does have, you can see up in there, um, bellowed up pipes. Uh, I did that uh, probably three years ago. Uh, when I had the transmission out. I went ahead and put bellowed up pipes in it just to eliminate that slip joint down in there. So that's the passenger side bank. If I roll on over here to the driver's side, kind of see maybe you can right up in there see that dirty spot Got five things to hold here all at once right up in here see that soot that is another leak from that back cylinder and once again, I don't know if you can see or not. Uh, probably can't see from there. I don't know if I can give you a shot of it or not, but uh, that one also is missing that backmost bolt. So, all of these got to come out. Um, there's a lot of debate on these as to whether or not you should use a gasket to uh, seal that joint or whether they should just be remachined um, from the factory. Uh, that's just a metal to metal joint. Um, it just fits right up. Uh, you machine the surfaces of the manifold flat. Um, Obviously the exhaust ports on the block have been machined flat and they just fit face to face. Um, that's probably the way I'm leaning. I want to get this thing apart and see what condition uh, the block is in. I can take the manifolds and have them machined. I can replace the manifolds. That's not a big deal. Um, but if that block is in bad shape, I may consider running a gasket. Uh, I've got somebody else that said uh, they've had very good luck, or their exhaust guy told him he's had very good luck just machining the manifolds flat and using a little bit of high temperature silicone on there just to fill any voids in the block, considering also going that direction. So we'll get this thing pulled apart, um, try to get these manifolds off, see what things look like, um, clean up the block a little bit, and go from there. So I'm going to get to work. All right, guys, well, there you have it. There's one. It's the passenger side. I had one bolt that uh, 
the head rounded off, so I was able to reach in and cut it off with the um, grinding wheel. But you can see pretty clearly where this one was leaking. Just blown by down there at the bottom. Um, and that's what I saw. Uh, the other ones all look pretty good. There's uh, some rust and some pitting. But, uh, As far as the exhaust ports go, they don't look too terribly bad. So I got a little bit of work to do to get that one stud out right there. Um, that shouldn't be too bad. Took me uh, probably, oh, I don't know, an hour solid of working on this. I was able to do it all through the wheel well here. Took, jacked it up, took the wheel off, and uh, was able to get access to everything. Um, I almost did forget that you got the tube on the end of this passenger side manifold for the exhaust back pressure sensor. So, um, that took a little bit extra time. Actually, that probably took me 15 minutes just getting that tube off of there. But, um, yep. One down, one to go. Gotta get to work. Well, guys, we got them. There they are. Passenger side and driver's side. So you can tell where this one was leaking. Closest to the firewall. Same thing on this one. Interesting that they both leak there. Um, I'm not really sure why that would be, but this one's the one that uh, the bolt was missing. And um, I don't know. Kind of odd. So I guess I need to get these resurfaced somehow. And uh, we'll see about getting them put back on. So, at any rate, uh, it took me you know, probably about an hour a piece. Um, once again, working through the fender well. Got the truck jacked up um, on the jack stands. Left the inner fender liner in there. I don't know if you can see that real well without good light, but was able to work in the void between the fender liner and the frame. So, um, passenger side is definitely a little bit easier. On the driver's side, you've got the steering box and all the power steering lines, as well as the fuel lines and um, the cord for the block heater kind of all run across right that right in that area. So, it's a little bit tougher to get to, but at any rate, um, there we go. Uh, tools that I used for this, uh, <laughs> yeah, kind of a little bit of everything. Honestly, uh, your best friend on this is um, a 12-inch 3-8 extension with a uh, universal joint on the end, like this, and um, a half-inch socket. I think these are metric bolts, but they've rusted enough from their 13-millimeter dimension that a uh, half-inch fit nice and snug. So I was able to get in there with those. Um, I used my swivel head ratchet just because it had a longer handle. And um, really leaned on them. And it took about all I've got. A few of them I actually cheated, put an adapter on it and used a big breaker bar. But uh, I was able to break them loose. Got them, got all the bolts out. So I've got uh, two or three studs to remove from the block. But I can worry about that. In the morning, this was the goal. So hopefully I can get these machined tomorrow and continue on putting this thing back together over the weekend. Otherwise, I lose the weekend. So that was kind of the push for this evening. So at any rate, there they are. And uh, try to get these flattened out and put back on. Hey guys, back here again. Um, just thought I'd shoot a quick video show um, these manifolds after we had them flattened out. I ended up uh, working with a good friend of mine. He's got uh, got a milling machine and uh, able to put these in the machine and uh, use a fly cutter to flatten everything out. So I think we ended up taking uh, about 25 thousandths off of the surface of both of them. Uh, I don't think they needed to go that far, but to take some of the surface imperfections and things out, I think that's about what we did. Um, so there they are. I still got to get uh, knock that stud out and take a couple studs out of the block. But uh, yeah, there they are. We're about ready to 
start putting things back together. So I should be in pretty good shape. I gotta get to work. What's up guys? Well, we're back. Um, got both of the exhaust manifolds put back on. Uh, you can probably see a little bit of red RTV there. All those new bolts, some anti-seize on them. Torque 2, 45 foot-pounds. Did that on both sides. Uh, we've got um, everything all hooked back up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let this sit overnight. I just want to give that RTV time to take a set um, before I put the heat to it. So I'm going to let it sit overnight. I'm going to go ahead and put the wheels back on this thing, button it up, and uh, be one step closer to being ready to go. Um, a couple other things that uh, got ready here while we've got it in the shop is that I went ahead and reinstalled the stock turbo plenum, um, bypassing the intercooler. You can see I just stuck a plastic bag over top of uh, the intercooler pipes and shoved the boots back on just to keep the dirt out of there. Got the turbo boost gauge hooked back up. Um, so yeah, pretty much uh, aside from putting in a stock air box and putting a stock down pipe back in place, this thing is about as stock as it's going to get. Um, hopefully those manifolds hold pressure and uh, we'll be able to build the boost that we need to to test this thing as a stock truck. But uh, performance wise, um, I don't think that intake or that downpipe are really going to make that much difference or that much improvement over uh, the stock setup. Again, the intake might make a very, very small difference. Um, but really, the stock air box is not that restrictive. So at stock power levels, I don't think we're really even pushing the limits of the stock unit. Um, a three inch downpipe might make just a little bit of difference in the exhaust gas temperatures, uh, except for the fact that we've got that stock catalytic converter put back in here. So again, my rationale there is number one, I don't want to unbolt the cab and jack it up and uh, take everything apart in order just to push that uh, stock unit back up into place. And number two, um, with that catalytic converter in place, I think it's really going to provide more back pressure and more resistance in the exhaust train than that downpipe will. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put the wheels back on this thing and button it up. Um, I think we're in pretty good shape. That, uh, that project honestly didn't go as badly as I thought it might. Um, you know, I really kind of thought this thing might fight me tooth and nail, but... Uh, even those busted off um, bolts, I was able to put a vice grip on them and just spin them right out. I mean, they were just a little bit more than finger tight. So, um, really didn't go too bad. But um, everything's put back together. I'm going to put the wheels on this thing, and I think we're ready to hitch it up to a trailer and make some tests. So, yeah, making progress here. Let's get to work. Mm -hmm. 